for the final session of the first day of Tech Tech. Um, I have some wonderful speakers, and um, uh, it's great to be able to introduce the session on civic tech, the French context, obviously in Paris. Uh, and uh, I think you have France over the past two or three years especially has massively embraced civic tech, is really considering deeply how civic tech and, and gov tech and so on can uh, not only uh, reform different aspects of government, but you know, create deeper and better connections with citizens, uh, both in Paris and France uh, more broadly. And so we have three uh, wonderful speakers to uh, discuss and, and, and share their experiences. Uh, first of all, I'm very pleased to uh, be joined by uh, Pauline Veron, the uh, Deputy Mayor of Paris, who's going to talk about participatory budgeting and the experience uh, within the city. Uh, then also Paula Forteza, an MP, a uh, member of the National Assembly of France, uh, before becoming an MP, was uh, involved in Etalab, was a great champion of civic tech, and obviously was instrumental in uh, tricking us to come to this wonderful city to, um, to host this version of uh, Tech Tech. And uh, also Tatiana uh, Defoe, who's um, going to talk about the state of civic tech and gov tech in France, really uh, the combination. Uh, Tatiana has also uh, been a, to a number of tech techs over the past uh, couple of years and is a uh, kind of great champion for, for, for the work generally and its uptake and, and uh, evangelizing about the benefits. So it's going to be really great to hear from them. I must uh, mention that Pauline uh, can only stay for a short time, so she'll do her presentation. We'll be able to take uh, some questions and then we'll need to depart, unfortunately. Uh, but then we'll hand over to Paula and uh, Tatiana to finish. So over to Pauline to take the stage. Thank you. Hello, thank you for your invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to be here to exchange with you about uh, our experience of uh, participatory budgeting in Paris. Uh, please uh, excuse my English, that is not very, very good, but uh, I will try <laughs> to, to be clear. Uh, so I'm uh, Pauline Véron, uh, Deputy Mayor of Paris, like uh, you just said it, uh, Mayor of Paris and Hidalgo, since uh, March 2014, and I am in charge of local democracy, citizen participation, NGOs, and youth. I'm in charge, so I'm in charge of the participatory budget. And, and I want to introduce uh, PB, a program uh, that Paris has embraced uh, for five years now and describe it uh, rapidly. And after, I can uh, answer to your questions. This is a, a sentence of uh, Anne Hidalgo. I trust uh, the Parisians. This town, they know better than anyone. I want them to help us con construct it and make it grow. This is uh, when we uh, start the PB in Paris. Uh, so uh, this is uh, reflecting uh, how uh, uh, behind, I think, about this experience. Uh, Paris has a strong democratic uh, tradition. Um, in uh, late 2014, just a few months after her election, Paris uh, Mayor uh, Anne Hidalgo set out to deliver on her ambition to turn the city into a more collaborative one, where residents play an active role in the ideas and decisions which shape its future. If uh, we want to make citizen participation efficient, we have to rally on all stages of the participation, uh, taking a step towards the citizens, giving the citizens the power of, to act, build policies, decisions together, acting uh, with citizens, and letting citizens act themselves. This is different uh, st step. Uh, one of the first steps for us was to introduce a participatory budgeting program. Uh, the budget uh, dedicated uh, each year to PB uh, reached uh, 100 million euros. Uh, it means that 5% of the global budget 
is allocated to the PB. Uh, global budget, but uh, only uh, investment uh, budget. Uh, this is uh, so a big part, but uh, this is a PB for investment. Uh, citizens are involved all along the process, and everyone, including children and teenagers and foreigners, can vote without condition. The only condition is to have an address in Paris, and uh, so you can participate. It was very important for us to make uh, an inclusive PB uh, and to, to give a possibility of everyone to participate. Um, in this slide, uh, I would like to show you that uh, um, 100 million euros is decomposed as follows. Uh, 55 million for the 20 uh, district PB in 30 million for the Paris PB. We have to, um, this is how organization, administrative organization with 20 districts. So uh, we have a PB for all Paris, for the big projects, and we have a PB for each district for more local uh, projects of the citizens. And we uh, reserved 10 million uh, for the PB uh, are dedicated to schools and high schools. This proportion is reserved for spending on uh, youth and education projects, with uh, schools uh, being encouraged to participate and children's vote determining how that money is spent. That means that uh, children and teenagers can participate to the global PB to Pro, to propose a project or to vote, but they also can uh, participate to a, uh, to a specially uh, PB into the school, into the high school, for project for their schools, uh, and uh, so they, they, they can participate at the BOSS PB. We want to stimulate uh, uh, the children uh, to participate uh, at the life of their school, life of their high school, and to choose, uh, they can choose uh, some uh, project like uh, um, uh, uh, sport, cultural uh, project, uh, maybe uh, some uh, project for environment, and uh, also uh, computing. Uh, uh, for uh, have a, a school more connected. They, they choose a lot uh, robotic and uh, computer for, for school. It's not very uh, a big surprise. <laughs> and for a more inclusive and redistributive uh, PB, 30% of the PB uh, go to the working class neighborhoods for 16% uh, of Paris residents. 30 million euro per year. Um, this is uh, the project of uh, EPB is to uh, try to uh, inc in include all the people. So uh, we uh, try with this uh, um, budget that reserved for these uh, neighborhoods uh, to make sure that uh, uh, people who live in this uh, in these neighborhoods have. Uh, a big part of, of the project. The city decided to reserve the 30 million euros exclusively uh, for the most uh, deprived areas of the city. We also work uh, with local uh, non-profit organizations in order to foster residents of uh, working class uh, neighborhoods to build collective projects for their neighborhoods. Uh, we know that if we uh, don't have a, a proactive uh, action, a proactive uh, um, mean, uh, it's difficult for these people to participate. So we, we try with uh, centres sociaux, um, a non-profit organisation, uh, to go uh, to explain how PB and how uh, participate. 
in the next uh, slide, um, I want to show you uh, uh, the, the participation of this uh, at this uh, PB. Um, for the last edition, uh, 211 Parisians voted in order to, in uh, other words, it means that 10% uh, um, of the global population in Paris vote for the PB. That, uh, uh, in comparison with other PB, uh, a good result. Um, we work to uh, increase every year, every year uh, the participation. So uh, participation is constantly increasing since uh, 2014. Uh, and um, PB answers representativeness. Uh, so 13% uh, of voters live in uh, working class neighborhoods for 16% of the Parisian population. Um, you can see on the slide increase of participation more and more e each year. Uh, participate. We uh, try to uh, uh, make a better uh, communication uh, for, um, for for uh, better uh, participation. Um, so it's uh, con constantly increasing. Thing it has been uh, launched. Um, we. We can see that uh, in the is, uh, in the um, uh, neighborhoods uh, where the upper class that the, the, there is uh, the less participation. For the last edition, uh, 2018, uh, 211,000 uh, and uh, inhabitants vo voted compared to uh, 41,000 voters in 2014. It means that uh, for the last edition, 10% of the inhabitants took part in the vote, like uh, I said before. Um, I want uh, you to, to show you uh, the campaign and uh, the vote. Uh, once the 21 projects list are known for PB, comes to the campaign. We uh, help uh, people who have a project uh, submit to the vote to, uh, to make a campaign with some flyer, uh, some uh, uh, posters, and uh, to uh, use uh, social networks. We, um, we make a campaign kit. Uh, they can adapt uh, for the, their project. So you can see some examples uh, on this slide. Uh, some examples, uh, uh, some uh, make uh, uh, posters, classical posters, but others uh, use a bottle of wine or, <laughs> or some uh, uh, dog to, to communicate. <laughs> to communicate. Uh, we, we give uh, some help uh, to these people to, to make campaign. campaign. So uh, we organize also the a big uh, citizens agora in September to the participatory budget. Uh, we organize uh, discussions under seven uh, thematic uh, agoras to talk about uh, uh, different projects uh, that uh, uh, su submit to the vote: uh, culture, sports, digital, uh, life together, public space nature, circular economy, and we uh, organize the debates and uh, discussion with the municipal, municipal team, the services of the city, and uh, the associative actors of participation to communicate about uh, the, the project. So uh, after the, the vote uh, can uh, um, begin, for the, the Parisian PB and district PB, voting is both digital and physical. Uh, 204 uh, ballot boxes and public servants to help people uh, to vote. And we uh, can see that uh, the, the most uh, votes 
the majority of the votes are in uh, uh, ballot boxes. Are in ballot boxes. Uh, support is provided to facilitate the vote of Parisian uh, online computer terminals and hotlines to, to help uh, for, uh, for the vote. You can see on the map of Paris uh, the, the different uh, places of the ballot boxes in Paris. Some are um, not uh, uh, always on the same place. Uh, we uh, make you, we, we put some uh, ballot boxes in uh, 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 public equipment, uh, library or uh, swimming pool or in the marketplace, where to facilitate uh, the vote. It, this is uh, public servants that are uh, uh, next to the ballot boxes, and we have. Uh, a sheet, a paper sheet, to note uh, all the people that vote uh, to uh, make sure of the sincerity of the, of the vote. Each year we improve the uh, number of ballot boxes and public servants to help people to vote because we can uh, see that the, this is a very... Uh, uh, people want to vote uh, in ballot box more than on computer. And uh, you can see on the photo uh, a ballot box uh, behind uh, a school. Um, parents and children can vote uh, before to go to, to school. And a very successful uh, uh, vote uh, behind the high school. And uh, the teenagers uh, want uh, to vote. And sometimes they propose some uh, projects. Uh, to make sports, for example, in uh, their uh, neighborhoods, and so after they, they vote, uh, all the all the teenagers of the high school for the project, and now we make uh, uh, um, two um, uh, two uh, places for sport in Paris, in the center of Paris, for uh, teenagers, grâce au budget participatif. Um, we tend to cover all the city and focus on the citizens where, uh, away from uh, participation. So you can see more uh, ballot box in the north, in the east, or the, the southeast, than uh, in the west uh, of Paris. So now, uh, what kind of projects are, choose, uh, are choose, chosen by uh, Parisians in this uh, uh, slide uh, projects that are mainly proposed and followed followed by Parisian concern vegetalizations, solidarity, sport, hygiene, and uh, mobility. We can see some examples uh, on uh, the on these slides: hygiene equipment for homeless people, uh, vehicles for food banks. Uh, electric vehicle, uh, sporting equipment on the, some uh, streets of Paris, uh, in second uh, second district for this example. And other example, this uh, mural uh, fresco uh, next uh, the Institut des Cultures d'Islam. Uh, we have uh, one fresco by uh, uh, district now. Uh, we can see also uh, this uh, uh, garden for children uh, that uh, uh, all these gardens are made uh, by the uh, inhabitants uh, themselves. And uh, another example, uh, uh, vegetalization uh, and the flowers into uh, the schools. Uh, so after the children can uh, uh, have uh, an activity uh, of uh, vegeta vegetalization. And to finish, uh, some lessons from uh, implementing uh, a PB. Uh, adopting a PB asks a high degree of commitment for politics 
and also for public administration because it's uh, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, work and uh, to uh, make sure that all the projects will be reali realized. Implementing a PB was a great opportunity to strengthen the transparency in informing people about the process of the public decisions. It helps also citizens to understand the, function the functioning of the city, to participate uh, to the realization of the project. All informations are available on the website about the progress of the project, uh, um, consultation or engineering study or works uh, realization or completed project. You can uh, see on the website all the, the, the step of the realization. It's really important to go toward people and adapt to the needs of each public of citizens. That's why we choose to combine online and offline participation. It's a tool to ensure the, particip the participation to everyone. And uh, to conclude, I'm uh, truly convinced that uh, co-construction of the public uh, decision is a legitimate expectation for a citizen. The current context in France provides it more than ever with the Grand Débat. Uh, and the PB is a success as uh, seen uh, the increasing participation Sorry. This success encourage, uh, encourage us to improve the program, to make it ever more participative. And I think uh, about uh, the realization. We, I, I would like that uh, people can uh, participate more to the realization of the project. Now it's uh, majority uh, the, the um, city hall services that uh, make the project. And we try now to include people to the realization with the engineers, with, with the public servants, with the, the politicals to make together the project and not only uh, uh, propose it or to have the, the idea about it, but to try to, to realize it. Um, so thank you for your listening. Thank you, Pauline. So I have two very quick questions. One is, um, how were the projects proposed? Were, they, uh, were the citizens given a list of projects to choose from, or did they propose the projects themselves? And the second question is, the outcomes that were chosen, were they very different from what you expected, or were they broadly in line with what uh, you would have maybe wanted to uh, invest in without a participatory budgety, budgeting process? Globally, globally uh, in general, uh, we are not very surprised about the project. It is often a project uh, we, um, we make or uh, in, we... But this PB uh, permits to give uh, to some uh, project a very more big impact because uh, Parisian propose some uh, ideas about, uh, for example, visit vegetalization or for uh, uh, cycles or for uh, solidarity. We have uh, some uh, decisions in this. Uh, uh, way uh, to, to make uh, all projects for cycles, but the, the people through the PB uh, said to, uh, to us, uh, go faster, go uh, further, uh, more, uh, more and more uh, than you, 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 you have to, to you, you, you want to do. So it's a kind of encouragement to, to uh, our project. Some projects are very uh, different of, of, uh, of uh, no, uh, no pro our projects, uh, but uh, this is little project or maybe we, we don't have any project for uh, uh, places, 
we think uh, this place is, is good. We don't uh, think about uh, to uh, uh, f make, make it uh, other, other way. Uh, so people uh, want a lot uh, give uh, di make a difference uh, uh, their streets, their place, uh, and uh, propose some uh, things different uh, in the uh, of uh, our project, uh, we think about our project. And uh, to answer your first question, um, this is uh, the, the people uh, depose uh, make make uh, their projects uh, themselves uh, on the uh, digital platform. And some are uh, the result of uh, uh, collective uh, ID, uh, council uh, of the district, uh, propose a lot of uh, ideas, about uh, uh, 30%. And some uh, uh, association too, but the majority is uh, individual uh, proposal. Uh, on the uh, digital platform. Perfect. Do we have? Do you have time for one or two questions? Or we have uh, three questions, four questions. So we'll do one here, one at the back. So uh, we have microphones. Hi, I'm Hazel. I'm a journalist from the UK. Um, my question is, did you take inspiration from any other cities um, and tech systems? Um, and another quick one, do you have any research on how it's impacted the way people feel about the government? Just repeat about the... The second one is if you have any research about how, if it's changed the way people feel about the government. When we uh, construct, uh, build our uh, PB, we think about uh, Porto Alegre, of course, uh, in the idea of to make an uh, inclusive PB. But we have uh, an, an administrative organization is very uh, complex in Paris because we are uh, a city but also a department and we have uh, 20 districts with uh, mayors and so we have to build something very special for us but we, uh, we um, uh, see uh, what they made in uh, New York and uh, in Lisbon uh, because uh, they, they have PB uh, before us and uh, also uh, we uh, think about some experiences uh, we made uh, in the precedent uh, government. Uh, we began to make some uh, dis uh, participative uh, dispositive. So uh, we, we mixed all these uh, uh, things, but uh, we also uh, built it uh, 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 year after year to complete with different aspects we don't uh, think about. And um, your second question is more difficult because uh, it's a uh, feeling or have return of uh, about the people. We made a sondage, how do you say we made a pool, merci. Uh, and uh, about uh, what do you think about uh, uh, the the, po the politics of uh, the mayor, uh, about uh, big uh, uh, politics? And uh, first was about uh, uh, politics, uh, about uh, transport, about mobility, because uh, it's very uh, important uh, decisions of the mayor. Other uh, people uh, said... Uh, uh, about uh, vegetalization and uh, about uh, l uh, housing, but the the fourteen, the f the la quatrième, pardon. The, the, the just after it was about PB and Parisian uh, 
uh, said we uh, think uh, PB is a good idea, it's a good thing. But we make uh, another pool, and, and the variant said, I don't know any uh, anymore, uh, I don't know uh, uh, as well I, I, as I want uh, about PB, I want to participate, but I don't know. Uh, so we uh, try to, I mean, to uh, make better communication. So we'll probably only have time for one question now, I think. The, the, the gentleman in the back, I'm not sure who you are. So. Hi, um, my oh. name's um, Tom. I design funding programs for a living, so this is very exciting. Um, uh, this is very successful in many ways. What is the least successful thing about it? The least, what works the least? <laughs> J'ai pas bien compris la question, pardon. Ah, le moins bien marché. Merci. Um, I think it's, it's difficult to explain very well to the Parisian um, how we made uh, his ID. How someone have uh, an ID, very good. Uh, we 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 take it. We propose it to uh, the vote. Uh, a majority of Parisians uh, said yes. It's it's good. I want I want it. Uh, and after we re re realize it. But we we this is an idea to go to a, a real project, a real realization, and to explain to people how to 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 pass to ID to project. Uh, it's, it's, it's not exactly what you want because we have uh, um, a technical uh, regular, uh, lower, uh, low, low uh, limits and we have to, 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 to make this project uh, in a, think about all these uh, limits it's not uh, easy to explain so I want to uh, make better this uh, part of the PB to explain very well to people how we made this ID in project and why and how and uh, to include people uh, more in the process of executing of the, of the ID. I think it's not very easy. Excellent, thank you. I'm sorry, we'll need to move on to the next speaker. So I know there was a couple of other questions, but Pauline, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So I'll hand over to Paula next, if, yeah. okay? Uh, and she's gonna talk about digital democracy as a response to the Gilets Jean. Okay, so um, where to start? <laughs> when. When I was in, in Lisbon uh, last year at uh, Tic Tech, uh, and I was trying to convince Mark to come to Paris, uh, I never thought it would be the perfect time, the perfect moment for the Tic Tech community to be in France, in Paris. Uh, we are living a very special moment for uh, participatory democracy uh, nowadays in France. Um, at the end of last year, we had this huge crisis, this huge social mobilization called the Yellow Vests movement uh, that was um, like protesting against a, a tax, a carbon tax uh, that was announced by the government and that was perceived as very un unfair. And uh, the weeks went by and the revendications uh, accumulated and changed uh, in their nature. And very quickly, they started being related to um, a, a need of citizen participation and a need to uh, have an impact on, the, on political decisions. And um, the, the Emmanuel Macron decided to uh, launch this huge uh, debate, this national debate, uh, during two months, we have uh, all population in France uh, debating uh, one way or the other. So the two things I, I 
think are interesting for you, for this community in particular, uh, are related to uh, the fact that you can um, take out some uh, lessons from what happened here um, because it was a real democratic laboratory during two months, and I'm going to, to detail that. And the other uh, thing is that uh, we need you because we're trying now to uh, put in place sustainable participatory uh, mechanisms. Uh, and I think the French population is mature enough uh, around these topics now to uh, hear what this community has to say and to teach. So I'm going to start with the first one. So what, what we can learn, what uh, this community that is composed by civic tech and researchers and uh, associations can learn from what happened uh, during these two months. So I was saying this was a really uh, a, a, an actual laboratory. Uh, and I think if we had imagined as researchers uh, a real, uh, like, um, real scale uh, experiment, we wouldn't have imagined something better than this. Because we had uh, so many different uh, mechanisms that were put in place that we can uh, compare them and we can take uh, like conclusions on them. So we had, during these two months, uh, an online platform where we had around two million contributions uh, just to compare, uh, we had some uh, consultations before uh, around uh, bills and um, national wide, and we had like 10,000, 20,000 uh, contributions, and we were very happy about it. <laughs> and now we have 2 million, so it's really another scale completely. We also had a presential. Um, uh, like uh, workshops or uh, um, meetings uh, where people discussed and face-to-face uh, -face were uh, discussing about the main uh, political uh, strategies uh, of the country. Uh, we also had stands uh, that were put in the main public, um, public spaces. Uh, we had this very French mechanism that's called Cahier de Doléances, that it's kind of a complaints book uh, where people can go to the mayor and just write what they think doesn't go well or could go better in their uh, local um, places and lo local, uh, at the local level. Uh, we had um, these conferences that are now ongoing uh, where we chose between 17 and 100, 70 and 100 uh, randomly uh, chosen uh, citizens uh, so that they could uh, like draw conclusions for, from these two uh, months of debates. Um, and we, we even had virtual meetings uh, for people living abroad with uh, different countries at the same time. So we really had uh, a huge... Um, deal of, of uh, different mechanisms. So that was kind of what I call the on of the Grand Débat because it was the official mechanisms that were put in place by the government. But we also had the, the off uh, Grand Débat, uh, which were more uh, critical, maybe, uh, initiatives uh, from mayors that didn't follow, um, that are in the opposition and that put in place their own platforms uh, we had what happened uh, in the media, in the traditional media, on TV. We had um, debates that were organized on, on the media, on TV, with actual uh, conclusions that were drawn and, and, and proposals uh, with uh, intellectuals, uh, with uh, the Gilets Jaunes that, that were very present on the media these last two months. Uh, and we had what happened on social media. So on traditional social media, Facebook, Twitter, but also, for instance, on Twitch, uh, this new social media for, for video players uh, with very young people and ministers that uh, were coming uh, to uh, discuss with, with young people on this, on this, new, uh, uh, on this new social media. Uh, we had um, uh, associations like uh, one that's called Entendre la France, 
that created a bot for a messenger, so on Facebook, uh, that, were, that was asking the questions of the Grand Débat and collecting answers and touching a more also young um, population. Uh, and so, so we really had s several uh, channels of participations of, of expression uh, which can make us uh, compare uh, one and the other and, and draw uh, almost very scientific conclusions. Uh, so not only we had that, but we also have the data. So I was very uh, keen to have uh, open data on the contributions uh, on the platform so that we could have the, the, the analysis uh, made by uh, everyone. And uh, we are organizing this weekend a hackathon uh, at the National Assembly, uh, inviting a lot of different initiatives, uh, researchers, uh, associations, uh, to analyze this data. What kind of things do we expect uh, coming from this hackathon? We would like to have, for instance, uh, maps where we can see uh, what kind of uh, revindications or contributions or topics uh, were touch upon in the different territories. Uh, we're expecting to uh, be able to trace if there was some uh, action of lobbies uh, on this uh, participation online. Uh, we would like to have some kind of uh, sentimental analysis or, um, or uh, text analysis on, on the contributions. Uh, there's already some researchers that um, because we don't have, sorry, the, the profile uh, of the participants online. We only have information about the postal code, so we can uh, make cards pretty easily, but we can't draw conclusions on who were the participants online. Uh, so some people, uh, some uh, researchers, I, are starting to uh, do semantic analysis to, uh, through the vocabulary that was used, uh, understand if uh, people were uh, older or younger, uh, if it was a woman or, or a man, uh, what is its socioeconomic background. Um, so we, we would like to have all this kind of analysis this weekend, so this Saturday. If you're still in Paris, don't hesitate to come because it's going to be uh, pretty interesting. So all this to tell you that during these two months it was a really uh, laboratory and that it's going to be very interesting for researchers uh, from, from now on, uh, and we will be able to draw uh, conclusions, uh, pretty interesting conclusions from what happened. So the second thing that, the second message that I, I was wanting to, to convey was that we also need you to um, try to inspire us and to give us some feedback about what kind of uh, participatory mechanisms uh, are useful and can be uh, more sustainable. So what happened also during these two months is that everybody was starting to talk about civic technology, about participation. Uh, I, I've been working in, this, um, in these topics for several years and uh, I was never uh, very much uh, heard or followed, and we had trouble making it a um, prioritary topic for the government. Um, but now we had Civic Tech being uh, interviewed on the most important national media. Uh, we had people talking about referendum, about petitions uh, on uh, TV, on the newspapers, so really the society is asking for this and is mature enough to uh, take a step further. And um, what I think interesting also is that uh, we're, tr we're trying to invent something new. We're not trying to um, put in place the same participatory me mechanism that, that we've known or that are, are well known. We're trying to develop this idea of uh, a deliberative democracy. So inspired in uh, Jürgen Arbemas, for instance, and what he, he could wrote, write about uh, how to put in place 
uh, uh, dialogue ethics and ethics of dialogue. And um, because what we see, we've seen with the Gilets Jaunes is that uh, the political debate became very violent, very aggressive, uh, very polarized. And we saw this uh, on social media with hate speech uh, diffusing more and more. And um, what, what I experienced personally and, and a lot of my colleagues during these meetings, local meetings, is that at the beginning of the meeting, everyone was yelling at each other and uh, saying, uh, we don't trust you, Not, no matter what you say, uh, we, won't believe, we won't believe what you say. And at the end of the meeting, after two, three hours of discussion, there was consensus emerging, or, or at least respect, or at least, okay, we're not, uh, we think differently, but uh, I see that your person is <laughs> the same as me, I see that you have trouble in your daily life, I see that not, uh, life is not easy for all of us. <laughs> so there was this kind of mutual understanding of this um, wanting to, to know each other, uh, this kind of, of therapy going on, and um, this, this kind of, uh, some people were changing their minds uh, from the start of the meeting to the end, realizing that um, they didn't have the, the good data, that maybe they were victims of fake news without even know, knowing it. And so it's very special what happens when you go through this deliberative process. And um, I think that we also try to draw conclusions from what happened uh, from the Brexit and from, uh, we had this, this um, like feedbacks from other places where uh, direct referendums were held, for instance, in, in Taiwan. They put in place a, a citizen uh, initiative referendum and their feedback was we didn't have enough time of deliberation before the decision and so the decision that uh, emerge are very emotional and uh, very drastic and maybe a couple of weeks after you realize you shouldn't have voted that way and um, for instance in Taiwan the, the results of some of the referendum were uh, against LGBT uh, so so we, we really think that what we've experienced during these two uh, months, uh, we, we, we are creating something new, uh, and, and we want to, to try to give it uh, like an institutional form. Um, so there's a lot of, of different um, mechanisms that have been studied this last month. So there's uh, what the Yellow Vests are asking is this uh, citizen initiative referendum. Uh, there's a referendum in France that already exists, which is the shared initiative referendum, where uh, we have MPs, we need a number of MPs signatures and a number of citizen signatures in order to trigger uh, the referendum. Uh, we are thinking about a petition right um, there's already a petition right at the National Assembly, but without any um, mandatory results. Uh, so it doesn't give any uh, conclusions. Or So now we would like to uh, oblige the Parliament to have a debate uh, when we reach uh, a certain uh, amount of signatures. We are uh, talking about participatory budget at the national level, uh, because we see it's very successful at the local level, but we also want people to have a say uh, on uh, national taxes and na national expenditures. Um, so all this debate is uh, ongoing, and I think uh, the tic tech community has a lot to offer. Uh, uh, so we, we would be very... Um, glad to have, to have your input on that um, and to try to imagine these new forms of participation that take into account this need of, of deliberation. And um, just to close maybe my, my intervention, I remember also that last year in Lisbon I was talking about uh, tools 
about a project that I um, contributed to that was called the OGP Toolbox. And I, I was talking about how uh, we used open source tools at the National Assembly, and all my speech was concentrated or was turning around uh, technical uh, platforms and functionalities. And, and what I think is that uh, in the civic tech uh, movement, uh, we need to, uh, to take a step further and to stop talking to each other <laughs> and to, uh, we're very uh, like self-centered and uh, maybe too techy, too geeky, and, <laughs> and we don't realize that even if we have the perfect platform, uh, if we don't um, interact, intersect this tools with institutional mechanisms, if we don't reach uh, real people, if we don't uh, solve uh, society problems with these tools, uh, we will turn around the issue and we'll still uh, see each other every year and it will be a nice party and we'll be happy to see each other, but we won't um, go further and, uh, and I think that's uh, we have the potential to do a lot with all with what we were discussing uh, in this uh, in these conferences, but we really need to uh, look a bit further. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula. <laughs> so we'll take one or two very brief questions because I want to make sure Tatiana has enough time to speak as well. So any uh, brief questions just now? or we can wait to the end if you prefer. Everyone's happy, content. Okay, consensus has been found. So I'll hand uh, straight over to Tiana, and then if we have any more questions, we can ask at the end. Um, so, uh, Tatiana, over to you. Hello, and um, thank you so much for having me here. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be speaking next to Paula and Pauline also. <laughs> um, and I'm going to try to talk to you about the state of civic tech and gov tech in France, and you might see why I separated the two. Um, what I'm presenting today is based on... How do I switch slides? Like, should I... Oh. Sorry, that might be easier. Um, so what I'm presenting today is based on two different types of research. Uh, one that is my PhD research, and the other one that is uh, more professional, uh, more underground research that I'm doing for a think tank called Decider Ensemble. And so on my, for my PhD, I'm focusing on civic tech actors in France as participation professionals, because as I'll tell you a bit later, um, the specificity of the market in France is that it is a market. And so you have a lot of companies that are defining themselves as civic tech, and they may not have the same logic as the NGOs that we're used to seeing um, over the rest of the world. Um, and how they're also organized as moral entrepreneurs. So. Uh, actors that are building coalitions to have an impact on policy, to have an in impact on policymakers, both at local and national level. Um, and then the second sort of um, source that I'm going to be using is research conducted on GovTech initiatives, meaning initiatives using civic tech tools but led by government, uh, either at national or at local level. Um, and this is what I'm doing at the Observatory of Civic Tech and Digital Democracy, as you can see, is like a very short title, very easy to remember. Um, and the material that I'm going to be using today is both um, an exploratory discourse analysis that I conducted on press um, articles and on blogs uh, that I conducted last year, so I don't have the national debate results yet, but uh, I'll update it, um, and field observation of the, <laughs> of the civic tech um, ecosystem in France uh, since around 2016. Um, and I also conducted 70 exploratory interviews, well, like 30 minutes to an hour, with um, local, either professionals uh, in local governments or startups or experts on uh, local digital democracy. So I can tell you more about um, all the material later, but 
Um, one of the specific sources I'll be using at the end is a barometer. Uh, I'm not sure that's the right term for it, but that we did at the City Ensemble every year since 2016, where we ask um, city governments what they think about civic tech. Do they know civic tech? Have they heard about it? How do they use it? What do they expect from it? And that's about, um, they answer about 80 questions on both their perceptions and um, specifically what they have implemented. Uh, and we got about 200 respondents in 2016, um, 100 in 2017, and 80 in 2018. So we think uh, people are getting a bit tired of the, of the issue, but um, over the years it's been, well, we got a lot of information, so we're happy. Um, why the presentation and why conduct research on civic tech in France? Um, the first thing that you notice when you look at civic tech in France is that there's a lack of independent research um, for the moment, and it's very difficult to find information that is not produced by the actors themselves. I mean, I know my society does a lot of great research on civic tech itself, but um, we haven't had yet the reports that my society did on who participates and what do they do. Um, but we have a buzzword that captured a lot of attention and um, that also created a lot of expectations with a discourse that is, again, mainly produced by the actors themselves. So it's not exactly the same meaning when we talk about civic tech in France than when we talk about civic tech internationally. Um, and I hope it's, you know, if it's unclear, don't hesitate to tell me. I wanted to go through a brief history of civic tech. Um, it's very, very brief, and I try to fit it all in one slide, so I'm sorry if some of the actors are not represented every time I get grief from, like, um, what I'm presenting, but um, the first thing we can see is that it's been a steady development since the beginning of the decade, and it started with NGOs like Regard Citoyen, which some of you may know, that focused on parliamentary control. What they did is platforms that allow citizens to track the activities of MPs, of senators, and also to track how a law is developed. Um, but more and more companies were created, and I think the um, Knight Foundation report played a role because it identified civic tech as a market and it had a lot of repercussion in France, namely in the press. The second thing we can notice in this history is that in parallel with the civil society development, we had very fast institutions positioning themselves on civic tech as a part of a political capital. Um, it's a shame that Pauline Veron left, but um, the city of Paris is one good example that very soon um, Anne Hidalgo, the mayor, used civic tech and digital democracy as a, as a tool and as a, something that allowed her to distinguish herself from other mayors. So, um, at national level, it was also accompanied very soon by institutions to regulate um, digital democracy. It's a lab, uh, dates from 2011, and that, that mission was first focused on open data, and well, you, Paula can tell you more about it, but, uh, and then carried on to um, take care of open gov issues. So at national and at local level, institutions played a role very fast in sort of framing and encouraging civic tech. And then the third thing we can say about the, the um, ecosystem in France is that there's a certain degree of conflict. It was very apparent um, in 2016 when the OGP summit was held in Paris, where um, a group of players, a group of actors, both from the civic tech world, but also from um, human and digital rights activists, uh, got together and called to boycott the summit, saying both that the French state was being hypocritical because they were passing laws that were going against public freedom and then holding like an open government summit, um, and also um, stating that the, the tool that was mainly used for public consultations was not open source, so you could not track and be transparent and promote open government while still uh, just using the same tool. And these questions are still active, they're still re-emerging today with the Grand Débat, um, with the big debate, because uh, the tool that was used is not open source. So if we sort of... Um, do a first uh, round about the civic tech in France. Um, first of all, it's a market. So the term civic tech has been kind of trusted by companies. Uh, maybe we should be talking about something else in France than the civic tech uh, that you guys know from, from other countries. The second one is that it's very institutional. It's, very de it's really developed um, because it's cool and innovative uh, by institutions. Uh, and it's very close to the public innovation sphere, and that may be a, a point that is um, in common with other ecosystems, which is that uh, the idea is to modernize institutions and sort of go towards more efficient um, institutions that will respond to the citizens, uh, which is good, and at the same time can be seen as a neoliberal project and can have some um, negative impacts or connotations, namely in France. 
And finally, one of the questions we can ask is whether it's all wind. You know, in French we say like it's just wind, it's just like no impact whatsoever. Um, a report last year stated that we have about 160 local governments that have used um, civic tech, including citizen reporting and crowdfunding apps. So it's not a lot compared to all the buzz we've been hearing about it. Um, and the numbers that we're reaching before the Grand Débat, because of course, you know, <laughs> it's going to change everything, um, were relatively low. Uh, it was still higher than in person, but it's still relatively low. And the big, big question is that we don't have any information on civic tech. We don't um, know who participates. There's sort of a fear of asking people who they are when they're online. And so we don't have any evaluation. And in one way, you can wonder if it's not because it's practical for local and national governments to not know because they don't have to ask the question, is it representative or not? So through the press analysis, it was interesting to see what civic tech representatives talk about when they're talking about themselves, when they're describing you know, their work and what they want to achieve. And the first thing you can notice is that they're building a crisis. It may be very evident in other countries, but in France, it's very specific that the problem that they're identifying is not with the institution and it's not with the citizen. It's really with the intermediation, like who is between the citizen and the institution. And I'm thinking some of you have also built this problem um, in your discourse in other countries saying, you know, that the citizens are good, they're there, they want to participate, and the governments are there, they want to listen to the citizen, but they're lacking the tools. And I, mean, I don't know if it's right or not, but at least um, it's really interesting to see that the focus is not on criticizing the institutions or the citizens. Um, and this may be linked to the fact that they're working with governments and have to sell services and tools to the, to the government. So you don't want to be too mean to them. Um, and the other criticism that they have is that everything is old. Um, you all know Pia Mancini's quote where she says, you know, we're 21st century citizens working with 18th or 16th century institutions. And this quote has been in the media in France in almost every article. There's very little variety in terms of um, key actors that uh, French actors are citing. So there's really this idea that institutions are old and should be reformed. Uh, a second thing is that the good citizen uh, that is built through these, these discourses uh, is responsible and informed and constructive. And there's a bit of a, a fear of conflict or at least an idea that there should not be conflict when you're um, doing democracy, when you're doing participation. And you know, again, not saying it's good or bad, but at least that's um, something to note. Um, a third sort of conclusion from press analysis is that digital tools are... Um, associated with different beliefs. The first one is that they're mainly tools for expression and information. We would think that uh, civic tech in France, uh, civic tech actors would promote deliberation, as uh, Paula was saying, but actually in the, the expressions used, in the words used, they're mainly focusing on information and on expression of oneself. Um, and it, it's more of a building an opinion, more of a survey logic than really a deliberation and debate um, logic. And the second thing that is uh, sort of attributed to digital tools is the ability to modify the nature of contributions. Um, when they're selling a tool or when they're talking about a tool, the idea behind it is that this is going to pacify your participation. It's going to um, shift how citizens express themselves. Um, they're going to really, first of all, be more constructive. And then since it's linked to their everyday life and to a routine sort of way of participation, they're going to be nice and they're going to you know, be involved and sort of magically everyone's going to participate and it's been changing a little bit but most of the discourse still focuses on like a, a magical power of tools. And finally, um, and well this is no surprise, um, there is a strong lobbying activity of civic tech actors in France for new intermediaries and very interestingly they're positioning themselves as these new intermediaries. You know, they should be the ones or you should be the ones because I'm talking to a lot of civic tech actors here <laughs> um, that are neutral and non-political and able to both talk to the government and represent the citizen. So there's this construction of civic tech as an alternative and a viable, credible alternative. Um, there are very different views in like discourse in the press, but this is really the mainstream view. And of course, some actors are more visible than others. But you know, I'm going to try to talk about different things. So um, if you have questions, tell me after. Um, based on this analysis and a few more uh, and a few other instances of research, what I did is sort of try to map the influences of civic tech in France. And some of them are the same as what you have abroad. Um, and very traditional, or at least it's, uh, you would expect it, like uh, citizen participation. You know, there are influences with uh, community organizing and 
consultation and public debate in general. Um, it's also relatively logical that there are uh, shared influences with the contributive web, with um, groups that work on Wikipedia, OpenStreetMaps, everything that is uh, a bit of construction of commons, especially in knowledge. Um, and finally, there are some links that are also relatively logical with the Tech for Good ecosystem, which in France is a bit separated from the civic tech, um, which is sort of the collaborative economy and also all these uh, startups and NGOs that believe you can change the world with technology. But that are a very different ecosystem from the civic tech one um, in France. And finally, there's two other ecosystems that sort of um, share influences and it wasn't evident at first. I didn't think I would find that. Um, and one of them is the opinion builders, so the petition aspect of it is logical, but the more political communication, survey, polling, and then gathering a lot of data to analyze what citizens are saying and to really construct uh, the public opinion is something that I wasn't expecting. And also this link to public innovation, to this idea to modernize and to make government more efficient with ideas imported from the startup um, ecosystem like you know agile methods and design thinking all this transformation of public action so these sort of ecologies circulate through people but also through ideas the terms that are used and networks that involve different um, people um, then I tried to this was a, a request from actors on the field to have a mapping of civic tech in France and every time I show this to a civic tech actor as in a producer of a tool he's unhappy because he says Either he's classified in the counter power, so people that do not sell services to the government, and he says, well, this makes us look like really dangerous and, you know, uh, or he's classified in the collaboration, and, well, this may not be the best term in France, but um, this idea to, like, sell a service to the government and to collaborate with the government is also something that they don't want to be associated with because you need to have a part of an activist um, um, you need to be identified a little bit as an activist to be credible as a civic tech. You cannot be just uh, um, uh, selling a product. So, well, I'm sorry if people are unhappy, but um, the idea is that if you're a local government and if you're looking for a tool, um, you're often sort of lost uh, with you know, everyone and everything at civic tech. And so the idea was to show this is what you can do with the tools. This is the main purpose that is attributed to different tools. And some of them you can't work with, but you can look at the ones that are counterpowers. And some of them you can collaborate with and they can probably provide services. And the three sort of categories are very simplified, but one of them, the first one is that information is the main use of technology and this is the main objective that you have, whether it is raising awareness or providing more, more qualitative information to the citizen or whether it is using information to control and to act on the government and to, to put pressure on the government. The second one, mobilization, is all about numbers. It's You can give your technology the main goal to make a lot of people do something or to really gather a community, where, whether it's it small or big, but the idea is really that this is what technology is useful for. And the third one is co-production. This is um, where the key uh, market is in France, is like really using technology to have people work together and all the sort of gov, gov tech um, is focused on this. But our sort of surprise was that um, we don't have anything in co-production that is not uh, for sale. Uh, we put OpenStreetMap over there because that would be sort of the idea that we would see, um, but it's not directly linked to policy making, so that's why we didn't really include it yet. Um, and so why look at um, the local and national governments that are also working on, on, on civic tech in France? The thing is that what we notice is a lot of NGOs that were created as NGOs are slowly becoming companies. And they're you know, trying to find a uh, business model to survive. And to do that, they're sort of moving from um, service NGOs uh, to service startups. And to understand that, we need to look at clients. You can look at the whole ecosystem around civic tax, which you know, public actors involved in supporting them, uh, sponsors and philanthropic um, organizations that are less important in France, but still play a role. Networks that are sort of trying to organize the, the civic tech community, incubators, um, and the research um, uh, organizations that are also being involved, but we, we chose to really look at clients to see what they were asking for. And so the findings from, from the barometers and the different interviews that we made um, in sort of <laughs> quick manner um, was first of all that there's a very strong interest and civic tech tools are sort of here to stay or becoming mainstream. Um, they're sort of a must have for the bigger um, cities in France, for instance. It's like innovative, it's cool to have your platform so you make it, whether you know what you're gonna do with it, 
is another question. Um, and a lot of um, local governments still state that they want to develop new tools, so it's, it's a trend that's still, um, it's still going on. Um, and an interesting thing is that for the officials that are using them, they're looking to citizens more and more like information contributors um, that are going to bring data to the table, which is a bit different than uh, people you want to pacify because you know, uh, you're using participation to, to keep people quiet. Um, so they kind of put them to work for projects and ideas. Um, the second one is that, although there's still a magical belief in, in technologies, um, there's a, there have been lessons learned regarding face-to-face -face and um, uh, the need for face-to-face -face meetings and also this kind of need to have communication do other things for your platform to work. Um, a third thing we can say is that the main objective is still communication and you see that also because the teams that are leading, that are developing the tools inside the local governments are usually the communication teams. Um, another one is that resources are still limited, although there are more and more tools. Uh, as in participation in general, it's often to you know, do it yourself and kind of um, inventing things. Um, and finally, the one we found this year is that transparency is seen as a good thing. It wasn't evident in the two previous years, so this was sort of a victory for us to say, okay, we want tools to help us be transparent and it's a good thing. Um, however, it's not such a good thing when they're used for evaluation of public policies. It's not something that we want and it's not something that sort of they can do, so let's not. So my question today and my question to you is sort of how transformative can civic tech be when it relies on the needs of the clients? And, you know, could we or should we push for a different model, a different business model? Uh, what are your experiences that maybe France could build on? There you go. Thank you, Tatiana. So I have lots of questions as an organization trying to both you know, do charitable grant-funded work and also commercial-funded work, but I think you've, 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 you've definitely covered that. So I think we can take a couple of brief questions and then we do need to get to the bus. So we've got one here, uh, one down the front because you never got your question earlier. So we'll do those, if you get those two first and then I know there's one at the back and one in the middle. Hi, uh, I was wondering, Paula, what is your recommendation to foster adoption of the ideas and standards upheld by the civic tech movement in institutional infrastructure? Okay, and then maybe if we ask this question as well, we'll take two at a time. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Tatiana. I was wondering if in your research you've also addressed the question with governments, local and national, um, on using civic tech companies or working rather with open source um, tools, because yesterday uh, I get the chance to talk one, to one uh, municipality that made a political choice not to rely on these co companies but to use more collaborative tools. Um, did you get any feeling from w what the trend is and why one might be preferred over the other? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Yes, yeah, so uh, I always try to uh, hack from within. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's there's a way of like mobilizing civil society to put pressure on the government and try to open up uh, data, uh, try to push the government to be more collaborative. Uh, but I always thought it was uh, you, you could have more impact working from within, uh, even if sometimes you have to compromise. And uh, so what I tried to do at the National Assembly was trying to to show some uh, proof of concepts of what could be done with uh, civic tech uh, and how you could uh, articulate civic tech with existent um, uh, institutional rules. Uh, for instance, in the French Assembly, we uh, MPs have um, the possibility to ask questions to the government and the government is forced to respond. So you can ask them uh, orally or by uh, written, uh, uh, written questions. And uh, what we tried to do was to use um, an open source uh, tool uh, called uh, My Priorities um, that was de developed in, Island, in Iceland. And um, we used it to crowdsource these questions, um, and MPs would choose uh, from these questions and uh, ask them to the government. And what is interesting is that the government is 
uh, obliged to respond. So what we haven't seen yet uh, in uh, these uh, civic tech or these consultations mechanisms is clear rules of engagement since the start. Uh, we don't know when we participate as citizens uh, what will be the impact of my contribution, uh, how much or under what circumstances will it uh, impact the decision, uh, how much will it be binding for the decision maker. And uh, even the, in this uh, Grand Debat uh, experience, we, uh, as much as I, I think it is a, a good experience and a, and, a, and a positive initiative, we still don't know, <laughs> we still don't have uh, the rules of what will come out of it. And we are um, kind of uh, expecting that things will turn out well. We're kind of uh, depending of what the politicians will decide uh, from what comes from the, from the discussion. So I think that to go one step further, we need to um, articulate civic tech and, and consultation and participation mechanisms with binding results. And that's something uh, I haven't seen yet uh, in France, at least. Okay. Tatiana, very brief answer, I think. And then we will need um, to be very quick on the questions. Yeah. Uh, on open source, uh, I think, indeed, in France, it's sort of the excep exception more than the rule. Uh, and as you mentioned, I think um, the, the local governments that are using it are making it a political decision because usually they go for proprietary software. Um, I can't explain all of it. I think part of it is that um, it's been developed more in, in terms of services and it's been sold a lot. There's a lot of marketing done towards local governments where they go there and you know pitch their tool and when you're looking for one, you, you go for the one you know, especially for communication um, purposes. And the other thing is that there's been a lot of um, sort of bashing of open source um, by saying that you know the, the, the software is bad and doesn't work and fails. And since you know the main actors and media are the ones that have the more market power as well, um, well, they have priority software and sort of had a, a full campaign for one full year. It was very interesting to see where they said, you know, open source, is, it doesn't work. I mean, it's nice, it's a good ideology, but it doesn't work. And this has had a lot of impact on, on local governments. Okay, so we get one very quick question in the middle, one at the back, and then it'll need to be very brief answers or we'll miss the bus to the National Assembly. Um, thank you. So my question is, is kind of to both of the panel and builds on Paula's point a bit. So if you have, and what Tatiana said earlier as well about civic tech as an intermediary between citizens and the executive, traditionally that role was for MPs. So if civic tech has binding results, would it eventually replace members of the legislature in that respect? So the... The, the kind of, of um, mechanisms we're thinking about is more mechanisms that make that uh, representatives uh, work together with citizens and not that they're bypassed or that they have a direct link uh, with the president because I think that could be tricky <laughs> uh, and a bit dangerous. Um, we really want to reconcile uh, politicians and citizens. So for instance, that's why I think it's more interesting to have a shared initiative referendum, uh, but with thresholds that are lower than nowadays and that allow, allow it to be triggered uh, e much easy, easily. Uh, but uh, I think that it's interesting that uh, M MPs are forced to work with citizens and citizens forced to work to uh, with MPs to uh, put a, a cause further. Uh, the other one that we're thinking about is the petition right, uh, where there's it's a petition right to the National Assembly, and it's kind of a, a way for uh, MPs to feel uh, what uh, the, the what comes from the society and to um, target a little bit more uh, their discussions and their work uh, with what real people want uh, for, uh, for their society. Um, so I think these are the kind of mechanisms we need to work on and we need to put civic tech on it and, and all the platforms that we know and, and like to, to build. 
Cool. So we have one very quick question from Tiago, and then I'm sorry, we'll need to wrap up. Yeah, a uh, very quick question to Paula. I mean, the, the, on the Grand Debat, one of the innovations, even though it's like a thousand years old, it's, it's the random selection, right? Um, but it's normally very difficult to communicate to people. The, the, the notion is counterintuitive, why you're just selecting people on lottery. Could you just tell like a brief story and how did, you, how did the government frame the message so that it became more acceptable? A 10 second brief story. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, personally, I'm not very fan of the randomly selected uh, uh, mechanisms because I think you can't force people to participate and that it's better when it comes real f with, with uh, a, a real uh, like um, impulse and uh, uh, that you really want to be there and you really want to contribute. And there was at first some uh, difficulties for the government to uh, reach their um, target of participants. They wanted 100 by a regional conference, and in, in some they had like 70, 60, 70 participants, because a lot of them didn't want to, to be there. Uh, but yeah, the, the positive uh, thing is that you have a more representative assembly, and uh, that you can uh, believe that the results of this discussion will be uh, more consensual uh, at at the, the national level. Um, the way they did it was um, by uh, randomly selecting uh, phone numbers uh, because they thought it was more broad than uh, people that were um, uh, in, uh, inscribed in the electoral lists. Um, and so they... Uh, they're ongoing uh, this weekend, so I think next week we will have more uh, results about ho how they, they went along. But what I hear is that uh, there's both uh, people that are happy to participate and, and people that are very critical of the whole uh, process. So uh, I don't know, I think we'll have more results uh, from all this experience uh, next week. Excellent. Thank you so much. Fantastic. I feel this conversation could go on for some time. Fortunately, we're now going to the drinks reception where hopefully everyone will be there and we can continue further. Thank you, Tatiana, Paula and to Pauline as well. And uh, see you all tomorrow. Thank you.